Mother Nature's got it right Every time she shines a big old light down on me You know I'm feeling fine But when I walk outside To the sea Blue, blue skies Blue skies and sunshine Hey, I'm Chris, and this is Alan Yap's session here at Louisiana Academy of the Performing Arts. I'm going to talk about songwriting today. There are a lot of different ways to write songs, of course. There are um, classical-oriented songwriting skills. You could just write from notation. You could write just on piano. You could be writing for an opera. Um, you could write pop music too. We're going to talk a little bit more about that style today. There are even a lot of different ways to write pop music. There's writing the lyrics first. There's riff-based pop music. Something like that. I'm going to focus on using chords and then making the melody. I think that's more of like a singer-songwriter style of songwriting. So if you feel comfortable with guitar or piano or, or ukulele, something like that, then this is going to be good for you for sure. Um, so some main things to think about when writing a song, particularly a pop song, are some of the main components. And those are chords, rhythm, melody, lyrics, and form. And when all those things come together, all those components of the song come together to make prosody. That's sort of the north star of songwriting. A song with great prosody is gonna, is gonna really blend well together. The lyrics are gonna complement the chords, the rhythm is gonna fit well with the melody and the lyrics as well, and all that's gonna come together to make something really special. It doesn't always happen, and that's okay. You could write just a silly song that's only a minute long and not a big deal, it's fine. It's good to write as much as you can, for sure, to practice it. But some examples of songs with good prosody, uh, ones that like use the title and the lyrics and all the music to come together to meet something are Crazy Train, the way that the uh, the way that the drums and the guitar make like a train rhythm beat in the background. Also, Shake It Off by Taylor Swift is a good one because it sounds like somebody wanting to dance. You Raise Me Up by Josh Groban, another good one because it uses very uplifting chord progressions and the lyrics go with that. So that's good prosody in a song, something we're always striving towards, really. Uh, so, to start, I always like to start with chords. That's kind of my favorite way to do it because chord progressions make sense to me. But you do want to just pick what you're best at whenever you're writing a song. If you're best at melodies, at just humming little tunes, then start with that. If you're best at writing lyrics, then just write a bunch of lyrics down and start there too. You know, that's a good thing to do as well. But I'm going to start with chords today. And uh, on guitar... I'm going to use one of the main chord progressions, that 1, 5, 6, 4 chord progression. This is a progression that you're probably very familiar with, which you hear in a lot of different songs. So in the key of C, that 1 is C, 5 is G, 6 is A minor, and 4 is F. So together that's... Some songs you might recognize are... Don't stop believing Hold on to that feeling, yeah Or she will be loved She will be loved Or, you know, uh, Oh, I won't hesitate No more, no more Right? Tons of songs using that progression. And there's no shame in, in using that. It's a great place to start. So once you learn those four chords, then you're really off to the races. You could use a capo to change that, keep those same shapes on the guitar, but use the capo to better fit your voice. If you have a higher voice, you might want to put that capo on higher. If you know you sing lower, then keep the capo off. Or you could use your brain and transpose them as well. So doing the one, five, six, four chord progression in the key of G would be G. D, E minor, and C, right? And that kind of gives a whole new feel to the song when you do it in a different key. It can change the, 
those those things, the feeling of the song when you when you change the key like that. And little side note, in case you didn't know, uh, we give a lot of chord progressions numbers, right? So in the key of C, C is home base, so that gets the one number right there. And then we just keep going from there up in alphabetical order. So the one chord is C, the five chord is G, the six chord is A minor, and the four chord is F. So that's good to know because then when you transpose into the key of G, if G is your new home base, then your one chord is G, your five chord is D, your six chord is E minor. It transposes like that, right? A good thing for you to know. Um, so once you get a good chord progression going, you've got something that you like, that sounds good, you know, maybe you want to change it up just a little bit. Some easy things to add to this chord progression are the minor two, which in the key of C would be D minor, or the minor three, which in the key of C is E minor, right? So if I did C and then D minor, E minor, then F, and then G, the five chord, and then resolve it to home base at one. That's something nice. I like always adding the two chord and the three chord. It adds a little bit of tension and then release. It's another thing we're always striving for that's gonna help you make good prosody in a song is creating tension with the chords and then resolving them. You can also do that with the melody and the lyrics as well too. Uh, that's a lot of music uses tension and release for sure. But yeah, so you got your chord progression going, right? And you want to figure out the rhythm next. So how are you going to strum? Are you going to strum fast? Are you going to strum slow? Are you going to pluck? If you're on piano, you could do block chords, you could do rolling chords, you could separate the chords in your left hand and in your right hand. So the same things that we're doing on guitar are very applicable to piano as well, or ukulele, depending on what you're writing on. So yeah, so you got that, and, and then you want to figure out how fast, how slow, what the tempo is going to be. This is bringing us all into the rhythm section of the songwriting now. Uh, and, and maybe how long you're going to hold the chords out too. That's called the harmonic movement. So in, in this basic chord progression, I'm doing each chord for one measure. C, two, three, four. G, two, three, four. A, two, three, four. F, two, three, four. You could do that twice as long. twice as fast if you want it to be more upbeat. So that's changing on half notes. One, two, one, two, one, two. All right? So that's always going to help, changing the speed of when you change the chords. And for different strumming patterns, if you feel like you've been locked into the same strumming pattern for a while now, I always suggest go learn songs that you like, songs that you listen to all the time, some of your favorite artists. That's a great way to learn new strumming patterns, new plucking techniques, and even new chord progressions too. You can always learn from the greats. So we got the rhythm down now. We're feeling the tempo of the song, if it's gonna be fast or slow, we're feeling how long we're gonna play the chords. We know what chords we're gonna do. Just play that around for a while until you get it in your ear. And then, if you wanna work on melody, just start humming along with it. Whatever you feel, whatever comes natural. like something, then stop, get out your phone, record it, your iPad, whatever. If you don't record things, then get something to write it down so that you don't forget whatever notation you need to remember, because it's no fun whenever you have a great idea and then it floats away. So definitely stop and write these things out, you know, and repeat them too. Repetition is key as well. So if you're not good at making melodies, say that's not your strong suit, you can use What's really nice on guitar is you can use the top string 
to hear where your pitch might be, right? So I'm gonna start on that note here on my C chord. Ba, 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 ba. So that melody, if I use those notes, is da. that don't don't be afraid to just kind of sing along to some things and, and see what feels good and if you have some lyrics already written down then you can see if they apply will they fit in that melody do I need to adjust a little bit definitely you know whatever you've been starting with is good and you want to come up with something catchy that brings us to one of the main points is like the form of the song the chorus is a part of the form and the chorus is always the catchiest part in most pop songs you're going to be able to sing that chorus along with it whenever it's on the radio you're going to be able to sing it to a friend they're going to recognize it that's called the, the the hook right the part that really hooks us in so so think about that too maybe you started the song with a hook and you're going to write around that for instance, I had this one song recently that I wrote the lyrics to first. Now I know why the willow weeps. Now I know, now I know why the willow's sad. Now I know why the willow weeps. Not for the love he couldn't have, but for the love he couldn't keep. And I needed to write some kind of a melody that went with that. So I, I just started humming and came up with something with this chord progression. Now I know why the willow's sad. Now I know. hope is that that's pretty catchy and that people are going to be able to hear that and cling on to it and sing along with it. So I'm going to use that as the chorus. And then what I'm going to do from there, I got my chords, I got a nice hook, I got a melody to it, I got the tempo set, I'm going to start thinking about the lyrics more and I'm going to start thinking about the form of the song. So some, some basic parts of form, some important words to know are verse, chorus, bridge, and then you got intros and outros, a couple other little things here and there, but that's some of the main parts. So when you're doing a chorus, we already said, that's the catchy part, the part everybody can sing along to. Usually not a whole lot of lyrics involved in the chorus. When you're doing the verses, you're gonna have like a verse one, a verse two. That's gonna explain the song a little bit more. That's where the meat of, of the lyrics are gonna be. And then the bridge, you can often use as a development section, Sometimes you could even switch the narrative of the lyrics there. It's usually where there's a lot of tension built up and then release whenever we get back to the chorus. So understanding form of songs is good too. I suggest always go back, listen to a song, your favorite song, and see if you can find, okay, this is the verse. Okay, now we're switching to the chorus. All right, now we're back to the verse. Um, some really cookie cutter forms are verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. Another good one is intro, and then verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and then outro. Or if you wanna do like the Beatles, they loved starting right in with the chorus, and then doing verse, verse, chorus, chorus, something like that, keep it short and sweet. So there really is no set way to do that. You can do a form however you want. It's kind of however it fits the lyrics. That's gonna be the best thing to do. Uh, but if you can't figure it out, you get stuck, then just stick with the easy one. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Easy enough, right? It's really up to you. Uh, so then you got put all these things together, right? You have good chords. You have a good tempo set. You got a good rhythm. You got a nice melody that you're thinking of. Um, you're going to write some lyrics down, and then you're going to try and structure it out. And if you if you get stuck somewhere or you just don't have like all of it worked out, that's totally fine too. I suggest writing most of it down, write what you can, come back to it later. You know, you can always readjust things. Don't be scared if the lyrics seem silly because you can come back and fix those too. And, and, and if you need inspiration, look for inspiration. Go watch a movie or ride your bike or go for a walk and look for inspiration somewhere. Listen, read a book, read a poem. You can even use that poem, you know, a little bit into your song. I love using bits and pieces of other things that I see and hear around me in my music. And remember, you can't copyright chord progressions, so you can steal chord progressions from your favorite songs all day. <laughs> 
that's about all we have time for. Uh, so thanks again for watching. And this is a, a little song that I'll finish out with called Willow that I wrote that uses this one, five, six, four chord progression.